Hello everybody. So today's video, we will be talking about the superposition principle. The superposition principle states that the output response having more than one independent source equals to the algebraic sum of the responses caused by each independent source acting alone. So essentially, each source is producing an output response. And it could, a mathematical equation that could follow this superposition principle would be V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3, da, da, da. And each V corresponds to each uh, source producing uh, whatever output response it have. So in this superposition principle, there's essentially a four-step process to this, and I'm going to use this diagram for an analysis. So the first step is to turn off all independent sources except one source. So in this diagram, let's say the question asks us to find what VO is. And the first step is to turn off all independent sources except one source. And let's say we want to turn off this source. So that's step one. Step two is to find the output response from the active source. So this is the active source that we have. And now we have to find what the output response is. So the output response, we could uh, name it VO1. And now step three is to repeat step one and two for all inactive sources. So now we want to uh, repeat step one and two for V2 because that is our only inactive source at this current time. So we want to turn off V1 and then turn on V2. And once we turn on V2, we want to turn off independent sources except one source. So we turned on V2, turn off V1, and then find the output response from the active source for V2, and that would be VO2. And that would finish up step three. And then step four is to add all the output responses together. So we have V1, VO1 and VO2, and now we want to add these together, and what we get is our total voltage. And these are the four steps on how the superposition principle works. And I'm writing all this down, and it seems like I'm taking a lot of time writing it down. And I'm doing this purposely because that would be easier for you guys to understand and have it sink into your head. <laughs> All right, moving on. So here we have a, uh, an example and a question that asked us to find the voltage across this one ohms using the superposition principle, given that we have now have three independent sources. So what we want to do is to find V1 uh, that would refer to our 4 volts, V2 that would refer to our 15 volts, and 
v3 that would refer to our current source. Now I want to clarify one thing and that is that when we turn off sources we have to identify whether it is a voltage source or a current source. So if it is a voltage source when we turn it off it's going to be short circuited and if it's a current source then it's going to be open. It's a pretty important uh, concept that we have to understand when we apply superposition principle and I'm sorry that I didn't do it here. So uh, uh, let's just move on. So uh, let's do four volts first. So we're going to turn off all the independent sources and so that would be 15 volts and one amp and then we're going to keep four volts on and it's going to look like this. So 15 volts is going to be short so it's there's going to be a line here and then there's going to be a uh, open circuit area here so there, this branch would be cancelled off and we would be left with this 4 volts. So since we are left with this 4 volts we can uh, combine these three resistors together and then we can use voltage division to find what our V is. So let's start with this. So we have 4 ohms here and then 2 ohms so if we combine these two together we're going to get 6 ohms and then 6 ohms uh, is going to be parallel with this 3 ohms. So if we apply uh, the concept of parallel resistors, then what we're going to get is we're, we're going to get 2 ohms. So our circuit would look like this. This 4 volts right here, and then there's going to be a 2 ohms right here, and then our 1 ohm, which we need to find the voltage across it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use voltage division. So that V1, I want to label it specifically V1, V1 is going to be 4 times 1 over 1 plus 2 and V1 is going to be 4 over 3 volts. Now moving on, let's turn off 4 volts, keep uh, the current source off as well and then let's turn on 15 volts. So 15 volts, this is how our circuit is going to look like and now what I want to do is I want to uh, combine 4 ohms and 2 ohms together so we get 6 ohms and now I want to rotate this circuit uh, counterclockwise 90 degrees to make it a little more simpler so what we get is we get 4, I uh, would get this 15 volts right here and then 6 ohms and then we get 3 ohms right here and then we're going to get 1 ohm and then the voltage across it right here and then this would be our ground. Now this is pretty simple. What we can do is we can find uh, the equivalent resistance of these two together and that would be 3 over 4. Would that be it? Yeah, 3 over 4 so we can just write it down. And now we can apply the voltage division again to find V2. So V2 is going to be 15 times 3 over 4 divided by 6 plus 3 over 4. And then what we're going to get is 45 over 27 volts. And that would be what our V2 is. Now it's time for our current source. So we have both of our voltage source short circuited and now we have to find what V3 is in this circuit. Now I forgot what to label 2 ohms here so let me just write it down right here. Now this is a little tricky because this time we're going to use current division to find what our V3 is. So what we're going to do is we're going to first uh, rotate the circuit <laughs> counterclockwise. So this is what our circuit is going to look like. And now we can, what we can do is we can find the parallel, equivalent parallel resistance, resistance of these two. 
and that would be 3 over 4 again. And now, it's a little bit complicated, but to find V, we have to find what the current is flowing through this branch right here. And to find what the uh, branch, what the current is flowing through this branch, we have to use current division. So first, what we do is we take uh, the equivalent series resistance of 2 ohms and 3 over 4 ohms, and then once we get that equi equivalent resistance, we can uh, utilize 4 ohms and 1 amp. Use current division to find what the current is flowing through here. So first, the equivalent series resistance of 2 ohms and 3 over 4 ohms would essentially be 11 over 4 ohms. And now to find what our current is, and we can label that as lowercase i, lowercase i would essentially be uh, the uh, total current of the current source that would be 1 amp times 4 divided by 11 over 4 plus 4 and what we get is 16 over 27 amps so now we can now we're well, now we know what that current is flowing through this uh, branch and now we can find what this voltage is so that voltage is going to be 3 over 4 ohms times 16 over 27 and that would be 12 over 27 volts that would be what V3 is. Now we can go back to our uh, part where I explained the four step process and we've done everything from step one to three and now we can go to step four and add all the output responses together. So our output response would be VO equals to V1 plus V2 plus V3. So initially V1 is four over three V2 is 45 over 27, and V3 is 12 over 27. And the uh, sum of these three voltages would be 3.44 volts. So there we have our answer to this example. The voltage is 3.44 volts and we've done that through the concept of the superposition principle. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see you in the near future. Okay guys, so there are two other videos that you might haven't watched yet but are related to the entirety of uh, this section on circuit theorems. So I recommend you guys checking it out.